Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, got a really cool video here focused on the Phantom's Grove. Uh, I've got to say, I need to call out Sherwin Sagabane from the Raid Shadow Legends players group on Facebook. This is based on his team. Yeah, and the speeds are quite specific, but the champions are very, very interchangeable. But we've got back the Paragon Cheese, which I love. I've not done a Paragon Cheese video for a while. So I guess let me show you the run and then we can go through some builds. I'll talk you through what's possible, what's not with this style of team. So I guess main thing here is Null Horn's a great tank. He's not the only one that could do the job, but he is a great tank because he never weak hits. He's got a uh, ability on his A1. This attack cannot be strong, a crit or weak. Yeah, so when you've got Enfeeble on you, as soon as you weak hit, you start to spike more stacks on this boss's uh, counter. The thing is, it doesn't need to be Null Horn. It could be any champion, I, th I think. But you do need to be reducing those stacks straight after if, if you're putting weak hits on. So Null Horn's particularly good for this as the kind of enfeebled tank. And what we need from an enfeebled tank is high crit damage, the highest on your team. Okay? Probably quite tanky stats as well, actually. Like... I'd say my stats here are okay, but I, I would probably try and go, if, if this is like a long-term build for you, I'd be looking at more like 65K health and probably more like 2.5K defense. The, the next important component is Paragon. Okay, we're going with the Paragon Cheese, which means that we're using his unkillable ability to completely cycle around staying alive. That's important. You then need a cleanser on a three-turn cooldown. I was like, I was just looking through my champs. I was like, who's, and in fact, let me show you how I do this because I'm using this more and more in raid and I'm actually finding it super useful. So I'm in the filters and I'm like, right, for this one, it's other effects, positive, remove debuffs. Yeah, so it doesn't give me exactly what I want because I need it on a three-tone cooldown and stuff like that. But I mean, Mithrala does it. So if you've got Mithrala already, then... She has got remove all debuffs on a free turn cooldown. She's much better at it, honestly. But uh, I just thought I'd throw someone in that was super random. Uh, but yeah, you just want to be going through. This is not perfect because some of it is like, okay, well, I only cleanse myself. Some of it is I only cleanse, you know, one person or whatever. But you can just kind of like flick through. Bad L could be good for this. Uh, I would say choose whoever can do it that's got the best blessing for you. Or a blessing would be good. My gator doesn't know and still does the job because my damage dealers have got blessings. Okay, so that's important. But anyway, anyone who's got a three turn cleanse like gator's got here, this is actually a really good skill. Uh, he's level 50 for me. And uh, all I've done is made him the right speed with uh, tanky stats. I've then got two people in DPS slots. These could be anyone. Uh, ideally, they are not green affinity. Yeah, so, so forget green because then you'll weak hit and create more stacks and you'll, you'll lose your run. Uh, ideally, they've got high blessings. So I just, literally just went through my champions and was like, right, well, who have I got who is either void, force, or magic affinity with a decent blessing, yeah, a decent level blessing? I then looked at it and was like, right, which of those can actually do something which does damage? So burns and poisons is what I was looking for. And I ended up with Venomage and Artak. Honestly, it could be anyone. Like if you've got Cold Heart, even better by a mile. Yeah, anyone like that. Anyone who's going to do damage over time type of stuff is going to be better. Uh, in fact, in the video on Facebook, Sherwin was using Elinaril, who does a A1 that doesn't need accuracy. So I could throw Elinaril in and do the same job, honestly. She's got this A1, places a burn, cannot be resisted. So you don't need the crazy high accuracy builds. Uh, and, and all he did here was just turn off the A2 and the A3 in his build, which was very, very clever. I thought I'd throw Artak in because most of us have got Artak. Maybe you've got a blessing on him. But so let's watch this through and then I can show you all of the builds. So I just slow it down. Your Enfeeble tank here is basically whoever's got the highest crit damage is going to get this Enfeeble uh, debuff on them. We get our hits in. We get our debuffs on from our damage dealers. Paragon then puts the unkillable cheese on for us. We get a cleanse away from our cleanser. And then we just basically start cycling through abilities. Now, your high blessing people will be reducing the counter. And your low 
um, your low blessing people and no blessings will be increasing the counter. And his counter is just going to increase uh, basically every time he has a turn. And you're going to be reducing it with the people that have got high level blessings. Ideally, everybody has a blessing, by the way. If everyone's got a blessing, then it just gets put down to zero between his turns. And then you're under no threat. We've got the speeds tuned so that Gator will always cleanse when he does his main ability, um, like the debuff spread. And we've got it speed tuned so that Paragon will always re-cheese uh, our tank just in time. So let's let it run through. As long as you've uh, got someone low like this with the Enfeeble tank on them, he'll always target them. We get the reapply of the, um, the, the nuke. We get the re-cleanse. And then this runs through. Very, very clean. Uh, big brain Sherwin doing the do for, for the whole community here, which is very cool. Obviously, you can replace the damage dealers with people that are just going to be more effective. Yeah, so uh, Cold Heart would be very good. But there's a whole bunch. There's a whole bunch you can do which are just giving you more damage. I'm thinking as well at the moment, just because of how I already had my Artac built, I've got Soul Reap on him. But I'm guessing Brimstone's got to be better in terms of just doing damage quicker. Although, does he do a, an ability actually? Maybe he doesn't actually do an ability the way we got this set up. So maybe so, um, Brimstone would actually be useless. In which case, Soul Reap would be good because at least it gives us a faster kill. But you can see here, we're just kind of like working our way through, always keeping those counters down, cycling through abilities. Obviously, if everyone was six star with Masteries, it's quicker and all that type of stuff. So it's, it's just dependent on the way, how quick you want it to be and stuff like that. Yeah, this is, this is like the very entry level version of a, a comp. But very, very slick, very easy, and uh, honestly, very cool. <laughs> There you go. There's the, the kind of spread. We cleanse it off again. And there's the soul reap. Didn't actually kill. Why is that? Didn't kill this time. But anyway, we're nearly, we're nearly there. There we go. So with me doing it slow-mo, talking through it all, 2 minutes 50. I think it's normally around 1.30 to 2 minutes, depending on who your damage is. Um, but yeah, really, really cool team. So let me show you through here what's going on. We've got Nullhorn just using his A1. Whoever your Enfeeble tank is, yeah, just, just make sure they're not doing anything that's going to affect turn meter and stuff. He's at 184 speed, and he's built kind of tanky. Yeah, I could build him tankier. I'll show you the actual builds with gear in a second, but that's all we care about. He's got to be your highest crit damage champion, 184 speed, and then as tanky as you can make him whilst doing those things. The cool thing about the champions I'm using here in Artac and Venomage is I actually don't need crit damage for them to do damage. So it's quite easy then to make Nullhorn uh, my highest crit damage person. If I was using Cold Hearts and stuff, then you've got to make sure you keep an eye on this number. So Paragon, 176 speed, pretty damn slow. Just needs to use his A2 whenever it's up, and he'll always put it on, on Nullhorn. Your cleanser, whoever that is, needs to be on a three turn cleanse. Yep. Yeah. Uh, open with your A1 and then cleanse whenever it's available. 285 speed, this is probably the hardest build. You can see he's a level 50 for me. Obviously, it's much easier if he's a six star, because then you've got uh, a banner as well. I actually, this is quite a high speed to hit for someone who's five star, but uh, otherwise, just tanky stats and speed. And then your two damage dealers, so you've got one at 251 speed, and you need, if it's gonna be someone who lands debuffs, you need over 600 accuracy, it's a lot. You'll see my builds in a minute. It's full perception gear. And in Venom Age, 250 speed. So just one speed between those two. Uh, same idea. Uh, so if I actually show you the way I got to the builds, because they are, are they challenging? I don't know if they are challenging, really. They're, they are for someone who's brand new. Um, but if you look at my Null Horn, just went like four pieces of crit damage gear and then some health. Tried to make sure that anything like banner-wise and stuff is just offensive stats. And then obviously we needed some speed. And we needed, I was just like looking, looking for crit damage and speed together generally. Uh, my gator build is just full speed gear. I was just literally filtered by high speed. And then on stuff like my gloves and my chest, I tried to make sure that I had um, defensive type stats as well. But most of it's like double rolls. Uh, so it is, with a banner, it's easier. You wouldn't need any triple rolls. And obviously, if you've got masteries, it's easier because you get things like Laura's Steel. But um, we got there.
Oh, Paragon. Paragon Cheese, where are you? Just random old deer, honestly. Just I look for the right speed, and then I look for tanky stats to keep him alive. Didn't have any masteries or anything. Uh, and then my two damage dealers, we just found the right speeds with the right accuracy. So I was just all perception gear with uh, accuracy banner, accuracy on the, the amulet as well. And really, I just filtered by speed and accuracy together to get to my, my gear requirements. Again, if you're not using someone who needs accuracy to do their damage, then it's just bringing in people that do damage, which is why in the, the video on Facebook, it was particularly good to use someone like um, Ellen Ariel because she needs zero accuracy to do her damage. Uh, you could also bring, I guess, anyone who's done a hit hard, whoever, whoever's got your blessings, basically, someone like an, um, Ellen Ariel, you could put in a toxic set and, and apply poison. So you do damage through toxic set instead. But the right speed is important. And then Artak, uh, again, similar, similar idea, um, perception gear and high accuracy, good speed. So that's going to be it. Good job showing, really good showcase. And hopefully that helps some people beat up stage 25. Uh, I've been Hell Hades. I'll see you soon. <laughs>